your name for the record and offer your okay. testimony. Mahalo. Okay, my name is Laulani Teal, and um, what I'd what I'd like to focus on here, you know, I've, um, I've been involved with a lot of peacemaking work involving the houseless, involving um, people who work with the houseless, activism, and many other things. And um, but what, I, what I'd really like to uh, address here is the interpretation of Kanawai um, Mamalahoy. I heard the legal opinions that were offered earlier by uh, by the Corporation Council and also by the uh, State Director on the Culture and Arts, uh, I mean, sorry, City, um, Director on Culture and Arts, and I'd like to uh, point out the research of a scholar here. Uh, his name is Derek Kauanoi, and he is, um, he is at the William S. Richardson School of Law, um, and he uh, published a summary of his work. He's done quite a bit of research on Kanawai Mamalahoy as a law, and um, uh, he published on February 6, 2014, he published in the Star Advertiser um, a number of findings. Basically, he cites several actual legal applications of Kanawai Mamalahoy during the time of the kingdom when it was you know, a law that was being in effect. Um, Kamehameha invoked the law after the Battle of Pu'uko'ai on Maui, um, which freed captured warriors, and it also prevented chiefs from oppressing the people. After the Battle of Iao Valley, Kamehameha again invoked that kanavai, this time further clarifying the law's purpose in maintaining the balance between people at all levels of political and economic power. Um, he also imposed the kanavai in relationship to uh, uh, a ship, Ele the Eleanor, which carried foreign, um, you know, foreign travelers, people on it. And so uh, that clarifies the fact that it, the kanavai applies not only to native Hawaiians, but it also applies to any people within Hawaii and also to the oceans. Um, so it, this, this is a quote from him that I think is really important. Um, he says, quote, after reviewing the accounts by historians like Stephen Desha, Ab Abraham Fornander, James Jarvis, and Ralph Kuykendall, a common theme emerges, the protection of the vulnerable from those in more powerful or advantageous positions. Um, he also specifically says, um, Honolulu's several anti-homeless ordinances help rank our city amongst the meanest to the homeless by the National Law Center on Homelessness and Poverty. This is precisely the type of government conduct that the law of the splintered paddle was intended to protect the people against. So this is a legal opinion from an expert in Kanawai Mamalahoy. This is not you know, um, just a general thing, but but this is the legal opinion of a trained legal scholar who has expertise in that area. 